Hey everyone, I'm back with some more Yu-Gi-Oh cards for you. I got another one of these packages today. And today I'm using a little bit of a different setup. Uh, maybe you'll be able to see it. I'm not sure if it works out, then hopefully you can. Uh, but yeah, I got this, this package in the mail. This is a, another big lot of classic cards, like a couple of others, others that I've uh, opened recently. And I also have a couple of... Uh, Kind of like big ticket cards that I got recently that I that I'd like to show you as well. I'm gonna take a take a look in here and I'll open this up. Um, I've been doing a I guess a few more than usual Yu-Gi-Oh cards on the on my channel here recently. Um, I would like to continue to focus on the the comedy videos. That's really what I enjoy doing. Uh, but I've been into uh, collecting classic Yu-Gi-Oh quite a bit recently and uh, almost none of my friends are into Yu-Gi-Oh so I kind of have nobody to uh, talk about it with uh, except for except for you guys I guess so that's what I'm doing here you know I'm gonna talk about someone talk with someone about these cards that I'm opening so I think they're pretty sweet and I like to share them all right some first edition stuff but yeah I mean I uh, definitely have more more of the funny videos on the way, so don't unsubscribe just yet. Because they are coming. So in this, we've got... I think this is... Uh, there are a few first edition cards in here that I don't have yet. And then the rest are uh, more, more first edition classic cards. I think a few unlimited that are kind of duplicates. It's kind of gotten to the point where if I find a classic first edition uh, foil card for a decent price, then I'll just buy it, even if I have it already. Just with uh, seeing how the world of collectibles has been recently, um, I just feel like it's good to have extras, like if I want to trade them in the future or sell them or something. like. Uh, it's another video that I'd, that I'd like to make in the future, actually, is uh, comparing classic Yu-Gi-Oh cards to other collectibles, such as Magic or Pokemon, and the performance of them recently. Uh, one um, observation that I've made, I guess, is that, personally, I feel that uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of behind by, you know, between five to ten years-ish, maybe a decade at the highest, uh, kind of behind uh, Magic the Gathering, just because it is a newer game. Like, I think it's uh, nine years newer? Yeah, nine years newer than Magic. So I kind of feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! is in a place where Magic was, you know, seven, you know, five, to, five to ten years ago. And it'd be interesting to see uh, how that plays out, I guess. Anyway, that's topic for another video. Uh, let's, let's get into this. Spent a lot of time rambling on so far. So we got this first edition Butterfly Dagger Elma. It's pretty cool. Dark Crisis. Big Tusk Mammoth. This is what, uh, yeah, I actually, I've never opened this set. Uh, what is it, Flaming Eternity or something? So I guess this is an ultimate rare. So the, these, this set uh, came out shortly after I stopped playing, uh, when I was playing when I was a kid. I stopped in 2005, maybe six. The last set that I ever opened was a uh, Rise of Destiny. I don't remember what it's called. It was the one that comes after Ancient Sanctuary. Uh, so I never opened any of this, but I've been sort of expanding very slowly uh, into, uh, I guess, sort of more more recent sets. It's not recent at all, but like. Uh, sets that are, come after Ancient Sanctuary. So this is one of them. Uh, I figured I'd pick this thing up. Got an extra Marauding Captain Unlimited from Legacy of Darkness. First edition Yamada Dragon and Unlimited Yamada Dragon. Two of them. Also from Legacy of Darkness. Oh, three of them. Well, got quite a few of those. And these should all be in pretty nice condition. They're... Not all of them are near mint. Some of them are. Uh, some of them are played, though. But uh, if they are, then it's going to be very lightly played. Here's a first edition last turn. It's cool. It's the second one of those I have, I think. 
unlimited last turn. A couple of unlimited magic cylinders. Three of those. This one's not centered very well. Unlimited. So we're getting into uh, some magician's force here. Skilled dark magician. First edition double spell. I didn't have that in first edition yet. Some first edition Amazonist archers. Unlimited luster dragon. Change of heart. Well, that was weird. The the name here looked like it wasn't gold. Still looks like it isn't, but it is. Is this just the camera? Here's some unlimited Metal Raider stuff. Like, this isn't a big card at all, but, like, even the unlimited versions of uh, the really early sets, you know, uh, Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders, uh, they've been going up in price quite a bit recently, so, I mean, I figured I'd grab some of these just to get them while they're cheap. I mean, they could get reprinted again. That'd be fine. Uh, they'd be more accessible. I mean, they're, they're pretty accessible already, but, like, even something like Change of Heart is un in Unlimited, is uh, kind of getting up there in prices, you know, $10, $15 for a really good condition one, maybe $15, $20. Got a couple of Time Wizards here, it's cool. This one in first edition is quite, quite valuable. Seven Tools of the Bandit, that one's really cheap. A couple of Barrel Dragons. Both Unlimited. Haribo. I, I liked this card a lot when I was a kid. Uh, I just liked the character from the show. I thought it was cute, I suppose. Uh, so I was excited when this card was printed. And uh, I tried playing it in my decks for uh, for a while. But uh, eventually I find out that it's just uh, not very good. But, you know, it's a cool card. It's super rare from Metal Raiders. A couple of this big elephant dude. Sewage in. Two Sewagens. Unlimited Lava Golem. Some Pharaonic Guardian. Rope of Life. Fairy Media Crush. What's that? Pharaoh's Servant. So here's a, another card where, where uh, it's from one of the sets after Ancient Sanctuary. It's another ultimate rare. Soul of the Duelist, is that what it is? Charcoal in Pachi. And I guess an Ultra Rare Inferno Fire Blast. Got some of this Horus, the Black Flame Dragon level 6. And this Ectoplasma. So uh, these Horus are first edition. So is the Inferno Fire Blast and also the Ectoplasma. So these are the, these and this thing I guess are my first kind of expansion into a little bit later sets. We'll see how that goes. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, I don't think that I'm gonna collect these sets, but at the same time they are, you know, vintage Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So if I can find them for a reasonable price, I'll grab some of them. So that's what's in this package here. Lots of cool stuff. I'm gonna show you a couple of individual cards now also. I got a binder off to the side here. Uh, let's put this off to the side. So, in uh, some of my recent videos, mm, well maybe not terribly recent, but in my past uh, Yu-Gi-Oh videos, uh, you might have seen a few first edition LOB cards that I got. Uh, so, I've managed to get a couple of the fairly large ones, actually. So this is my binder where I have my sets, well, some of my sets. This one is, a uh, Legend of Blue Eyes, uh, Magic Ruler, and Pharaoh's Servant. I skipped Metal Raiders because, uh, that's in a separate binder, but also it's just such a massive set that, uh, if I put that in here, uh, there wouldn't be room for, for another set. Uh, so I would be, I have like two sets and then a bunch of blank pages. So Metal Raiders is a different binder, but, uh, so an LOB, I don't have the set completed yet, but, uh, 
one that I've got here is a first edition Trihorn Dragon that I got recently. It's pretty nice. I think I spent in Canadian dollars about $200 for this. I don't know what that is in American, maybe like 160. And obviously it's not near mint because if it was, it would cost a lot more. Uh, but for first edition LOB and even Metal Raiders for that matter, uh, I've had to, I guess, lower my standards for uh, condition because if it's in near mint condition, it's going to be really expensive and some of the cards get to a point where they're just kind of out of reach. They're just unattainable, basically. Uh, but occasionally you can find ones like this that are in decent condition. Uh, they're not destroyed, but they're not really, they're not close to near mint. I'll show you this one. So this is the first edition Trihorn Dragon. Let's take it out. The front is, you know, pretty nice. No major damage. There's a, you know, you can see a dent there. It's not perfectly flat there. On the back though, the corners, they all have some wear. There's this scuff here. Uh, it doesn't look great, but at the same time, for a first edition Trihorn Dragon from Legend of Blue Eyes, uh, I'm happy just to have one that's not completely destroyed. You know, there's no big creases or anything like that. It looks nice on the sleeve. Uh, you know, ideally it would be in better condition, but I'm happy to have this one. And I have to carefully put it back in the sleeve. It's it's kind of difficult to get these uh, to get these in the the perfect fits. I like to have all of my cards in the binders, in uh, in a perfect fit. It just feels so much nicer to have it in there. I think it looks nicer too. And then for these valuable ones, I'll double sleeve them. So put that in there. So these sets are not complete. Uh, some of them are missing just like random rares and commons. I was buying all of the, the commons and rares that I didn't have, but then I also started buying just uh, collections and I found that uh, uh, I ended up getting duplicates of any of the, the rares and commons that I had already bought from buying collections. So I just stopped buying the rares and commons that, uh, that I was missing because I figure I'll just get them eventually through buying collections. So that's, that's what's going on right here. That's why there's an empty spot. Next one that I want to show you though is quite cool. And that's the, there's a bunch of empty spots here, but those will be filled eventually. It's the wrong page. This is the Red Eyes Black Dragon in first edition LOB. I got this one recently, pretty, pretty excited about it uh, because you know, the, the crown jewel, I guess, of Yu-Gi-Oh! collecting would be a first edition LOB Blue Eyes White Dragon. And then after that, you take, you know, just a small step down is this. This is, you know, second place. The only thing that's better than this really is the Blue Eyes. So to get, you know, the second most desirable card in basically all of Yu-Gi-Oh! in first edition, I think it's pretty sweet. And also, I've always liked Red Eyes Black Dragon better than Blue Eyes. Like both... Red Eyes, it's a crappy card, you know. Uh, there, there's cards that support it, that can make it playable, but the card itself is not very good. I mean, kind of, it's the same for Blue Eyes too. But I always just liked the design of it better. And just like the Trihorn Dragon, this is not in near mint condition. Uh, I believe I paid, I don't know what, what currency I wanna go in for this. Uh, let's say in US dollars, it would have been a bit more than 400 something like that shipped uh which honestly i think seems like a very good deal so the front is actually quite good on the front you know no major damage the, there's a bit you know a bit of damage on the corner there the thing that you can see it there though there's a it's not flat because you go on the back there is a crease it's a small one though come on focus camera there, you can see it. There's a little crease there, right here. Um, you know, but just like the Trihorn Dragon, I'll take what I can get because for a near mint, first edition Red Eyes, you're talking thousands of dollars. Um, if it's like truly near mint with no defects, 
it's very expensive <laughs> so that's one of the ones that's kind of unattainable like if i wanted to drop a ton of money on it I, sure i guess i could but at the same time i kind of would rather just have this one uh, and also to find a raw card uh, an ungraded one that's in good condition is very hard to it's a hard thing to do because if, if a card is in very good condition typically someone will get it graded and uh, something i haven't mentioned before is that i really don't like graded cards um it's just to me a graded card isn't really even a card anymore it's something completely different you can still appreciate it and i do see the appeal of it but i just i have no desire to own graded cards the only desire really that i have to get a graded card is if there was something really expensive I might buy a graded one just to ensure that it's an authentic card but i like aside from that i don't want a card in this lab or anything because i want to be able to put it in a binder i want to be able to feel it if I, if I really wanted to i could even put it in a deck and play it i'd like to be able to appreciate it that way and you can't really do that with graded cards and also not to mention the massive premium on pricing that comes with them when they're in good condition those are the cards i wanted to show you though there's also a first edition. Come on, focus. First edition uh, Curse of Dragon right here. That's pretty cool. Uh, I could show you more of these another time. This video is getting a little bit long, but uh, I just thought those ones were pretty cool. I mean, they're they're pretty pretty hard to find first edition LOB cards, so I'm happy to have them. Yeah, like I said though, uh, I might be I might try doing some some more Yu-Gi-Oh videos more than I have me doing anyway just because uh, I like talking about it I guess um, so if you like those videos you could definitely let me know uh, if you don't like them I suppose you can also let me know but uh, anyway just uh, you know let me know what you think of this uh, otherwise I suppose uh, thanks for watching It'd be cool if you can like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff and I'll talk to you later